What's up softball parents, players, coaches? This is Coach Dan Blewett. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. I've got a lot of throwing videos, tutorials, stuff like that for the mental side, for throwing mechanics, for throwing velocity. These are some of my specialties as a former professional pitcher and baseball softball academy owner. So in today's video, we are going to cover basically why some players throw sidearm because I get asked a lot of times from softball and baseball parents, hey, my daughter throws you know, kind of low. It doesn't look the same as other players. Is sidearm okay? Do we need to fix this? I feel like we need to fix it. So usually my answer is that most young players throw sidearm because they have problems with their mechanics and then sidearm allows them to still get the job kind of done. But most of those players, when we improve their mechanics, their arm slot will usually climb up from somewhere in here to somewhere a little bit more quote unquote normal, slightly over top. Now, as an infielder, there is no essentially there is no normal there's a default which is like hey i got a ball in the, in the hole i backhand it and i have to throw a missile to first base to get this girl the default arm slot is kind of just over the top the one you would throw your absolute hardest if you had to like knock down an airplane out of the sky right if you're doing that you wouldn't throw a sidearm so usually your best velocity is over top but as an infielder all the other arm slots are different tools so when someone says hey is sidearm bad you don't want to say without seeing them first that, yeah, sidearm's terrible, like, you know, you should never learn that first. Some people, num number one, naturally throw really well sidearm. You see it in baseball, some of the best pitchers in the world, like Chris Sale, Madison Bumgarner, are lower arm slot pitchers. And then most, though, are a little bit higher up. And then the same thing goes with infielders in baseball and softball, that they're just going to use the, the correct arm slot to get the job done. So sometimes that's over top, again, like deep in the hole, backhand, boom. And then on the run towards first, when they're going to their right, it might be a really low arm slot because that's what the, the demands call for, okay? So that being said, if your default throwing mechanics looks something like this, where you're kind of low, there's probably something wrong. And we do probably wanna improve on that. So I'm gonna talk today, I know this has been a little bit of a long-winded explanation, but the backstory behind what you're doing and why you're doing it is really important. So let's get into is sidearm good or bad and what are some of the reasons that sidearm throwers in softball have that sort of issue. Okay, so there's a handful of reasons that you might throw sidearm because your mechanics are off. So the first one is this. So when you field a ground ball and you scoop it up to your center hopefully, it's gonna be a lot like hitting where our right foot's gonna be our plant leg and then our left foot's gonna come in front and there's gonna be more weight in our back leg until it transfers into our front. So when you hit, if you land on your front foot, you're gonna lunge at the ball and you're gonna have very little power and you're not gonna just get many hits in general. The same thing is true when you throw, when you vacuum it up, it's gonna be right foot, weight's gonna stay back, and then we're gonna have level shoulders for the most part towards first because we have more weight in our back leg. So when we do that, our arm can fall and now we can go over top a lot better. We get to use our front side, just like in hitting, and drive the ball. In, in this instance, when we're throwing, we're gonna use our front side to sort of pull us up and over top. So, a lot of players, they don't have strong hips, and what happens is they end up leaking, and the more of their weight's here when they're ready to throw. So what happens when that happens is that basically, they don't get to use their front side, and so then they end up spinning off the ball, and then their arm slot drops. And the reason this happens is because when my front shoulders are low, I can't use this. This doesn't make sense as like a next move. So what my body tends to do is say, okay, I can't really go up and down anymore. So instead, I'm going to fire my hips sideways and I'm gonna make up for it. That's typically why the arm comes out low. Okay, so the next reason why players accidentally throw sidearm in softball is that Essentially, they fly open too soon with their upper body. So what flying open means, this is also similar to hitting. There's a lot of parallels between the two. If you step in the bucket when you're hitting like this, your hips have opened and a lot of your power has already gone out sort of the back door. When you're throwing, if you do the same, where I've landed and you can see my Warbird Academy logo, this was my, my baseball and softball academy. Uh, if you can see it, if it's already angled forward a little bit, I've already wasted some of my hips. So now, because I don't have as much power anymore, my body's gonna fire around the ball extra hard and my arm's gonna typically go with it. When I land closed like this, or from the side here, this position, 
Now my chest is facing slightly back or at the worst sideways. Now I get to go up and over top. I get the full power of my hips and my front side and my core. So basically if you spend some of that energy in the air, so you rotate a little bit too soon like this and you're flying open, now you don't have much left. So your body will spin to try to produce more power and catch up. So that's the other really, really big reason that players end up throwing sidearm because they spend too much of their energy in the air, they land like this, and now they sling around it. If they stay closed and then their front arm falls, boom, now they can get more into it. The other big reason that they throw sidearm is because they're just a little bit too linear and they don't have much momentum towards their target. So if I'm moving towards you, I gobble up a ground ball, and then I'm getting a lot of momentum, my chest and my front side are gonna be moving towards my target. And it's naturally gonna to wanna to come a little bit more up over top. If I don't move my feet very well, which a lot of players do, they just sort of stand like this, they don't have that linear momentum. And so now producing a spin is the easiest way to get, again, some available power. So the big thing with players, and I saw this when I visited the Dominican Republic, I watched a lot of young baseball players who were exceptional at all the fundamentals. One of the things they really did well, and this is one of the reasons I think so many Dominican players in baseball throw so hard, is that they always move their feet. They're constantly moving their feet. And so when they get a ground ball, basically what happens is they vacuum it up, they're moving their feet quick, and then so their, their entire body moves as a system. It's all very much in sync, and everything can sort of flow together. Whereas a lot of American players in both baseball and softball, they tend to just be flat footed and then their body's trying to produce power however it can and it struggles to do that. So then it ends up spinning and this is what happens. But when you have a lot of extra momentum from moving, your chest will tend to go forward and when your chest tends to move towards your target, your arm will go over the ball a lot better, okay? The other main reason that softball players tend to throw sidearm by accident is because they don't do what's called a scat pinch. They don't pull their shoulder blades back very well. So if you feel the ground ball and now you're here where your elbow's in front of your body, instead of being back here, you'll tend to just either throw a dart, your elbow will get a little bit low, and then you'll kind of shove it like that. So a lot of the same problems apply, but this is more of a mechanical issue with how the hands break because we want to go back like a bow and arrow. And if we don't, if we just sort of go like this, now we shot put it, and it's either coming out from like here or from there. So it can be a mechanical issue with your handbrake as well, and that can be tough to figure out, you know, which of these issues is causing the sidearm throw. And so this is where being a good scientist comes in. If you as a parent or as a coach have a player who's, their throwing mechanics look suspect and you feel like they need to be fixed, getting out your iPhone or your Samsung or whatever and using that 120 frames per second or that 240 frames per second uh, camera setting getting some video and seeing if you can spot some of these things I'm talking about. If you can do that, then you can say, hey, I don't think you throw sidearm just because we need to yell at you more to get your arm up. I think you throw sidearm because you leak so far and you're on your front foot and then everything sort of comes in behind it. So it's really about what the cause is, not what the actual symptom is. I mean, we all know that. You know, if you're really low energy, you're sluggish, it's probably because of the food you eat. You don't need just like a shot of caffeine, right? If you eat healthier food, you exercise more, then you suddenly have more energy. You don't want to just replace it with just a caffeine, caffeine pill or a cup of coffee or a Red Bull. So let's talk about a little bit how you can work on this. So one of the best drills, and this is going to be, you're going to need more of an in-depth sort of mechanics review if you really want to get to the bottom, if you, to get to the bottom of the issue if you're struggling. But what you really want to do first is see where your weight is. So one drill that I really like is called the hop, pa hop pause drill. Um, that's what I call it. I, it's something that I use a ton. And I'm basically just gonna feel the ground ball here. I'm gonna hop to my right foot and I'm gonna pause. And then after that, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna throw. So by doing the pause, what happens is that basically it's forcing me to stabilize on my back leg and then more of that weight's gonna stay back as I go through my throw. And most players that I do this with, they'll do this. They try to do the hot pause and they're just falling right away because they're used to shifting their weight super early. So I'm here, pause, and I go. 
So I hope this video helped. Throwing sidearm is sometimes a really tough issue to diagnose and to tackle, but it's usually one of these number one through four tips that I kind of gave today that it's something not just the arm slot itself. It's usually the weight shift, if they're flying open, all those sort of things. And you want to just try to be, again, a good scientist going through different variables to try to figure out which one is maybe causing the issue, okay? Thanks so much for watching today. Definitely check out the links in my description below. I've got softball online courses. So if you're looking to diagnose and fix your own mechanics, I've got a course that does that. It's called She's Got a Cannon. I have uh, templates for teams. I've got lots of different stuff. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.